Hey everybody, Chuck and Stacy here with VO Buzz Weekly. We are so excited. We have the amazing voice of our coach and director of more than 50,000 promos and trailers. Are you kidding me? David Alden. Let's get buzzed. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to VO Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacy J. Aswan. Well, our guest is an accomplished on-screen actor, voice actor, respected voice of our coach, and check this out. As a director, he has voice directed more than 50,000 network promos and trailers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We are so excited <laughs> to have him here. We are honored to have him here. He is the wise and wonderful David oh, Alden. Thank you. We're getting buzzed. Yeah. Whoa, buzz. Yes. I'm here to get buzzed you feel with it? you guys. David Alden. Now, listen, you are serious about coming here and getting buzzed because you just yeah. drove down about, like, how many miles? 80 miles? Yes, 80 yes. miles. 80 <laughs> miles. <laughs> In five minutes. <laughs> five minutes. <laughs> Yeah. To come and get buzzed with us. Thank exactly. you so much. Man. I'm happy to be here. This is such an honor. We're really, so happy to have you. Honestly, it's just like this is much. like what you guys do for the voiceover community. I have to acknowledge you and Thank appreciate you. you guys because it's there's so many people who are trying to get information from all sorts of different places, and it's just like, and here's like one stop shop. I mean, all the episodes I've seen, your 200th episode. I mean, I was there for that. That was awesome. Thank you. I mean, you. you guys really are of service to the community and gets the service to people's creativity, so. Yeah. Well, thank you, that means a lot coming from you. Thank you, yeah, we appreciate All right, we were that. gonna retire, but we'll keep going. All right, so we'll all see right. you guys next week. Bye. David Another. needs something um, to do on Sundays. <laughs> I'm gonna get right down <laughs> to it, man, you. because one of the greatest things is when you have somebody in this industry, such as yourself, who is willing to share all this amazing, information with the people that are trying to mm -hmm. you know get to the top to that top right. level um, or even to the level where they're like working professionally mm -hmm. um, and you have worked with the best of the best right from lucky, Don LaFontaine yeah. to there on out and you're still continuing to yep. work with the best of the best and directing for what promos and mm -hmm. trailers mm -hmm. and all this stuff right, right? so my question is, let me look at it real quick, make sure I ask you the right question here, David. Yeah, don't stump me, because um, no. um, he's out. <laughs> the answer is... Oh, thanks. Yeah, so can you share with us maybe mm. one or two memorable moments from wow. like directing some of these biggies mm -hmm. that have you know stood out to you? Wow. Uh... <laughs> Don't say there's so many. There, there are <laughs> more than so many. Uh, but of course it goes back to uh, like Don Fontaine. I mean, it's, that's sort of the epitome because that's sort of where the game sort of changed yeah. mm -hmm. for everybody and for the industry as far as how things were approached and, and stuff. So um, two stories with him very quickly were one was the first um, trailer I was supposed to go direct from the trailer house. I was working for this very small boutique at the time when there were still only like a handful of uh, trailer houses. Yeah. And it was a uh, go over to, um, I think it might have been Wood Holly or something like that, mm -hmm. and uh, take the paperwork and you're gonna direct him on this trailer uh, and it's Don LaFontaine. I'm like, all right, whatever. <laughs> so, you're like, who's this guy? You know, I came from a theater background and I came, you know, I worked in television and stuff, so the voiceover world, I knew a few folks, you know, the Dawes Butlers, of the, mm -hmm. the things I grew up with and yeah. stuff like that. And so I go in and it was just very, you know, he never like downplayed people. Like, you know, who are you? Right. What do you know? Do you know who I am? Yeah, do you know yes. who I am? You know. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so that became one of those 18 year friendship relationship, work wow. relationships that was just one of those things. It was just like, and, and each day that I, time that I worked with him, it was such an like, wow, I get to work with this guy. And mm -hmm. as I found out who he was or who he was at the time, and I was just like, wow. And then I got to work with other guys like Nick Tate and John Leader and yeah. mm -hmm. Gene McGar and all these mm -hmm. other guys, but those guys, but that was the one that sort of set the tone for yeah. me. So that was like, wow. And then one day we were working together and he goes, you know, you've never gone on a ride with me. Oh yeah, And I said, rides. And of course like, you know, <laughs> well you never asked. <laughs> he says, uh, when do you have some time? I said. Well, you know. By the way, that's not a bad imitation of Don Lawson. <laughs> yeah, I wish. Just, I'd be working right now, baby. <laughs> um, so, you know, he says, Just, uh, meet me at Tisherman in, on Tuesday at 10. Clinton will be there. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so, 
I'm there, 9.30. Yes, yes. <laughs> Probably get there early. Um, and we, I just spent the whole day with them. Mm -hmm. We went so everywhere cool. and uh, yeah. we had you know, great conversation and just all those things. So I was very lucky to have that happen. Yeah. You know, that I mean, working with people like Don and, you know, in present day, you have Scott Rommel and mm -hmm. Joe Cipriano, Vanessa Marshall. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of capture what is what is it about their ability, their confidence mm -hmm. that really makes them stand out? I think it's just their authenticity. It really comes down to being an authentic, real person, not, I don't say full of themselves, but because you have to have a certain, uh, you know, the ego is a great thing because it helps, it supports us, but it also right. it's, it's the beast that we have to tame sometimes. Right. Mm -hmm. But they have a sense of, they know their, their stuff, they're not overconfident, they're not, you know, braggarts and all those other things. They're very humble, and I think that's, um, like this whole coaching thing and coaching people in voiceover, directing people, is it's kind of like when you look at the higher edge, uh, higher echelon of tennis players, like the Rafa Nadal's and the F F F Roger Federer's. They're so good and they know it, but they're also so humble. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think like Joe Cipriano and Don was the same way. He knew, but it wasn't like, like, like that thing, you know yes. who I am? Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. And when he would say that, i go, what's your name again, Grandpa? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it was a very fun relationship with him. Just, But anyway, mm -hmm. I think it was more of that humility yeah. along with the, the confidence of having done it for so long. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's what with anyone who, who like people who do uh, speaking engagements, they, you know, when people get up, they're so nervous to speak in front of an audience and they get kind of, but the ones who do it and do it and do it get bolder, yep. more mm -hmm. confident, and when they have humility, those things mesh together and you have like a really well-rounded performer, speaker, yeah. what have you. Exactly. you know, I think that's that thing. I think it's yeah. just that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, that's pretty cool, man. And you know, you have, in this industry, I meet them every day, and you know who you are. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, people that that are really, really, super confident, like they'll mm. send you an email saying, right. you know, hey, you know, I'm really great at this and I have this amazing voice and everywhere right. I go, somebody tells me that, you know, mm -hmm. this is what I need to be right. doing and then you hear them and they're like, not very good. And you're gonna watch the money trip pull up <laughs> right? what I put, you so, know. So they're yeah. not starting out from a humble <laughs> perspective right. here, they're yeah. starting out the other way around. Um, the, it seems to me, from the people that we talk about, mm -hmm. like the Ciprianos and the La Fontaines and stuff like that, because, I mean, when you have a conversation with Joe Cipriano, yeah. he is the nicest guy yes. on the planet. Yeah. I mean, he'll give you his shirt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know I what I mean? Yeah. So some of these guys that are so great are also the calmest, most mm -hmm. modest, right? They're right. not, yeah. like, full of themselves. Right. Yeah. Um, I think that's a good thing to take, yeah. you know, be confident, be confident, but you know, you don't have to be so mm -hmm. cocky that uh, you right. can't fall down. Well, I think yeah. part of it is, um, but and even the Don LaFontaine lab and the foundation and all that about, you know, that whole thing about much is given, you give back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think they had that, they all the guys you mentioned have that because they're here not only to do what they do, but to serve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we don't all, you know, when we're in service and we're giving, the world is a is a better place, of course. you know. But if we're always taking and taking and taking and, and say I'm I'm better than you and I'm this and that, I think we kind of get caught up in the that again the the part, darker part of the ego, the shadow self. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important to realize that, that that is inherent in them because someone gave them an opportunity, right? You know. And I think once you know, and, and that's all we're all asking for. That's all they are asking for mm -hmm. is an opportunity. Yeah. And I think when you know you you think you should have something that you don't have. And like, I should have that. I should be doing that job. Right, that right. guy, what's that guy on TV doing? I should be doing that. Then that just creates a negativity. Mm -hmm. So why would you want to create mm -hmm. a negativity in your yeah. own world? Yeah. So There's yeah. not enough room in the booth for all that. No, 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 no. Speaking as a coach, mm -hmm. um, what, what inspired you to want to be a coach? Well, I didn't really um, aspire to be so much mm -hmm. as, um, because of the work I do, I often get calls uh, when I'm directing promos and things like that, people, I mean, even when I was working at trailer houses, people, I would get calls and say, you know, I worked at a small, like I said, bo uh, trailer boutique, and, you know, they, do you know how I get it, get into voiceover? How do I get started? And somehow I, the calls would always come to me because I knew <laughs> I was, you know, had come from a background right. of, in theater and, and in TV and stuff. And so um, they, people would just start to find me in a sense. Mm -hmm. And when uh, Nick Omana and Tom Pinto had Voice Tracks West, 
uh, they would call me up and say, hey, can you come and talk to, we're doing a six week, you know, those six week basics right. that include everything. And so when it came to trailers and promo, I would, they would call me over and say, can you come and just speak to these students and stuff? I'd say, absolutely. So I, it was not like a fun thing. I've always felt like a bit of a teacher and mm -hmm. I used to, you know, teach tennis and te teach my kids tennis. I've always felt like we're all here to serve and all here to teach each other. Mm -hmm. And when we all learn from each other, I learn even more so. Of course. And right. I think that's how it all works. You know, it's like, so, you know, when you're a yogi or something, you want to be a better yogi, you, <laughs> you, you know, yes. you want to be a better yes. teacher in essence. So um, I think that's what it was. So I think once I, that started rolling and people started get, hearing about that, they, I used mm -hmm. to get phone calls. Hey, can mm -hmm. you come talk to so-and-so? Or somebody call me and say, I heard you were at over at Voice Strike. Can you come? Can you you know? Can I talk to you for a minute? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. So I've always been like, yes, because I don't want to say n no to someone's creativity mm -hmm. or to someone's um, dream. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, and I think because we all need encouragement, um, we all want to be that thing. You know, I would, certainly I would want to be the, a top voice over guy. Yeah. I'd love to be a top tennis what a coach. I'd love right. to be, but it doesn't mean we can't be in our own world. I paint. So yeah. it doesn't mean I, you know, I've shown uh, artwork here and there, um, but it doesn't mean I, that's, it's just part of all who we are. We're all these, you know, we all think we're like one thing, but we're right. like, we're those diamonds. We yeah. all have different facets to right. ourselves, and it's usually creative. Mm -hmm. And I always say, if everyone quit their job and be, did what they wanted to do, we'd have a lot more artists. But it doesn't mean that you can't be in mathematics and not be right, creative. Right. So there's just it's just another facet. Well, they're all so pieces that make the whole. Make the whole, yeah. and that's the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And that's so how I got, why I do it because it's just I want to encourage people. I think if you know I've support someone's dream, someone will support mine, and it just builds in that energy yeah. of again, like I said, positivity, mm -hmm. and enthusiasm. I don't like to say passion. It's, you know, it's been said to me that you know, the passion was like the like the passion of Christ. It's like he sets like a suffering word. Yeah, right. Whereas, true, true. But enthusiasm this right. comes from a, the word like for spirit. Vim and vigor. Vim and vigor. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's like from Ellie's story. Vim and vigor. Vim and, and vigor. <laughs> That's a good one, Stacy. Um, yeah, Thanks, Jeff. Vim and vigor. Yeah. And uh, but enthusiasm because it means there's a spirit in it. You know. Right. So right. when we're enthused, that's even more than passion because passion is like we're suffering. Mm -hmm. I got to be an artist. I got to, you know. But yep. when we have enthusiasm, it, yeah. I think our eyes light up. Positive, just, there's yeah. something more it's bright about it. Absolutely, yeah. man. Yeah. Hey, how do you um, how do you approach your coaching style? You know, because everybody teaches a little bit differently, yeah. and I know it depends on the individual. Right. But how do you look at it? How do you take somebody from, you know, from point A to point B? Yeah, I. Well, you know, I'm listen, obviously I listen to their voices, I listen to their reads, and I try to just find a real situation. You know, like if they're having trouble with copy, I always say start with, you know, start with your face, start physical. And because, you know, we're, again, we're not just our voice. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, our, we're, when we do something, when we think, we go, we usually look up for some reason when we think. Mm -hmm. When we, you know, are like, you know, Hey, by the way, you know, we do things physically. We lean right. in for a secret. We lean in. We react by going, oh, wow, what was that? You know, so mm -hmm. we're very physical. So I try to get people to do a physical action. Um, I had a guy the other day, and um, he was he was he couldn't quite get a sort of a flat drama-esque sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And I said, pretend you have a facial, like when you put those green masks on, right? <laughs> yes. And you can't make it crack. Mm. And you just have to talk like, you know, you want to get it down here. Yeah, you know, kind of so you can't, you know, too much. yeah, just, you know, be and be serious about what you're talking about. Because the moment it cracks, you're out of character. Mm. So I try to give them a physical, sometimes sensation. I said, like, close your eyes. Do you feel the mask? Do you feel it, yeah, you know, tightening. drying, tightening? Yes. And then, because sometimes you look in the mirror and you go, ha ha, and you go, clunk. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Not that I do a lot of facials, but yeah. I really like <laughs> I'm sure you've done a few. Well, we're going to get good. to the, ger I can tell. the dermatology I can tell, session. By the you way have you're... very nice skin. Well, thank you. So yeah. clearly, and your not pores. Only that, Stacey, I can't even but... see your pores. <laughs> but Stacy, look, he's kind of like you in the way that his shirt matches his shoes exactly. I know. Those same are, shade those of gray. Are great. Same shade. Did they come together? Did those you get them as a great. set? That's an Chuck, you would, you would wear those. You of course I would. That's why I'm admiring them. I didn't want to be too matchy matchy. The detail is style. Brilliance is in the details, it's, gentlemen. It's, there you go. See, yes. we all defer to her. Yes. As everyone does. Well, and I'm interested because you have your um, master's in spiritual psychology. It, I did a master's program at mm -hmm. uh, University of Santa Monica, which yeah. is all about spiritual, spiritual psychology. 
but I went there for me, again, I went there for me to clear mm -hmm. my own mm -hmm. stuff. And in that, I really discovered, and, and I've always felt that I was fairly, not in a religious or a theological sort of way, but just more in a spiritual realm. And it just seemed to resonate with me, rather mm -hmm. than a regular psychology, more, it was more behavioral. I just felt I needed to go deeper. Right, And right. people I'd met, uh, that I've known, had, that had attended there, really just went like, this is, and I wasn't, I was going to therapy, I was doing stuff like that, you know, because you want to clear this stuff out of your, from your past or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, in the couple of months I'd done some therapy, there was moments at where I was, when I went to school, that it was like, I got there quicker. Mm. You know, it was just like, not the hour, okay, your hour's up, your 50 minute hour yeah. is yeah. up, yeah. and <laughs> yeah. you're coming, but I feel so horrible, I'm you know. I'm not ready I'm not ready to leave. It's so, but at, at the USM, you get to the heart of the matter. Mm -hmm. And that's what I try to do with my students or the people that work with me in voiceover is this, even in, in when I direct promos, is get, to get to heart, the heart of the matter. Sometimes if right. someone's like having a problem, I say, what is, what are we trying to say here for one? Yeah. Um, you know, pull back a little, relax. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. people get caught because they want to do so well. Even the ones who are working at the top of the line right, every day, they right. want to, like, you know, it's like, hey, we don't pull back a little, let's relax. Yeah. Or let's enjoy ourselves or let's give ourselves a scenario you know, um, it's three in the morning, you're at a bar, and it's in, and, and you're part of this, you know, uh, clandestine crew. First of all, if it's three in the morning yeah. and you're at a bar, <laughs> things are not going wrong too bar, good. First wrong bar. But I try to give them scenarios. So the you know, enunciation so. is a little sketchy. <laughs> yeah, um, well, I don't tell you. Yeah, but, but you, that's good. I mean, so obviously it helped you open right. up yourself, but then as a, as a coach, as a director, right. I mean, because we're all, yeah. it, you know, we may have different levels of our career, but we're all human beings, yeah. and we have that humanity yeah. in common. So I try to bring a real a reality in a sense. So when mm -hmm. I'm, you know, when I when I went deep for myself, it helped me to be more authentic in my teaching style for go, from going there. Yeah. And so I bring that, and again, the theater work that I had done, and, and the games and things, and you know, sort of improv again, waiting for right. the bus to stand right. and fail right. a spell and sort of improv right. games. Do you have people yeah. fall back into each other's arms in the booth? No, not you so hear, many oh, trust. I do it by Just, Skype, so I hear, boom, are you okay? I, was, I, was, I meant to catch no you. No one caught me. <laughs> We're on Skype. But, but again, they're padded rooms. <laughs> True, like yeah. our walls. Exactly. How so. badly could you get hurt? So. When you're working with, you know, promo trailer guys, what do you think are some of the obstacles that prevent them from giving a great read? Well, uh, thinking too, about, too much about it, being the, the, the self-editor that we all are, some self-critic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, some, you know, because you might be in the midst of a read, and all of a sudden, I think, oh, there'll be a big F-bomb that goes off and a couple of, you know, where's a fizzle, mezzle, fizzles, you know, underneath their breath. And they say, let me do that again. Um, and I think that's what it is. I think once we get out of our head, because mm -hmm. that's the most dangerous place Absolutely. for most of us, you know, it's like once we get in our head, everything goes awry. Right. So once we just allow for that authenticity to come through, allow the director to, you know, just say, you're on it, you're, you've got it, don't worry about it, just keep yeah. going. Yeah. Um, don't stop. Mm -hmm. That's that whole thing. Don't you know? You're reading a promo from T to B, and in the middle you just go, "Oh crap!" It's I like, know. Never. Keep going. Always keep yeah. going. Well, you know, yeah. So yeah. listen, you yes. you have this greater advantage um, that you're also talent. Mm -hmm. So yeah. how do you look at a piece of copy, whether it's commercial or a promo yeah. or whatever? How do you break it down, and what do you do if you flub it? Like, what's what's your thought? My feeling is if, you know, again, it's always about looking what the script is, what's the what's the message at the yeah. bottom, like a Maurice mm -hmm. Tobias, what's the last line, because that's where you find where you're headed, that's your, you know, your mm -hmm. arrival, and that's your destination. So I think it's about really finding those key words, you know, Don would, you know, Don, I, in fact, Don used to, he did a couple of workshops, like, it was packed. <laughs> Over it was that. I can imagine. It wasn't Buzzies, but it was one in the valley. Anyway, there was a bunch of guys. There was like guys, five thousand people. Five thousand guys and guys who were at their top of their game, and they were yeah. all like at Don's feet, like okay. Yeah. <laughs> the keys to the castle. The keys to the castle. That's what yeah. it felt like. Um, and so it's always what are the key words? You know, mm -hmm. a mother, a child, in danger, and then there's usually the turnaround. Yeah. But you know, he'd always say, just find the main words. Don't worry about the ands and the does and the then, then, you know. Right. Unless, it, unless it's actually an actual turn. Right. But within the, the, feeling, the feeling of the spot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so when I sat in that chair that day, by the way, that's another quick story. He said, oh, it's my turn. <laughs> 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 you know. Well, how are you 
When you're auditioning and, and working as a talent, mm. are you a harsh critic for yourself? Do you fly outside and go, ah? I think we all or do that for a moment. Now that you're all and, grounded. Yeah, right. I sit there like this. Spiritual psychologize. Yeah. <laughs> psychologize. <laughs> I'm psychologizing. It's a word. Um, Look it up. Come. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's about, yeah, that's there because I'm also, you know, most of us are working in that vacuum at, mm -hmm. at home. Um, and when we audition and, and, and sometimes just reading trailer copy or promo copy to read it, mm -hmm. you know, or any copy, you should be doing that every day. Right. But usually what I, for me, it's about doing it and getting it out of my head and just like just find that moment like where's the real feeling of this spot mm -hmm. you know because we can get caught up in that whole thing about oh god one other take you know hit the marker yeah. so you know where to come in this where do you go this one's gonna out? be it yeah this yeah. one's it and then you just kind of go oh and then the airplane <laughs> flies over <laughs> and then they start construction across the street yeah. and you're like okay maybe i should come back to this <laughs> yeah. so that's all there so you know yeah. but it's being aware of outside influences don't regulate who I am. So again, mm -hmm. it's going back to who I am, mm -hmm. and if I can just find the real, authentic read, and honest read, then it's going to come through. I think, yeah. you know. And then and it's up to then it's after that. It's not up to me. It's or, or to any of us. Right. It's always after we do our job, whether it's an audition or the yeah. job. It's up to the producer, the creative director, the advertisers, mm -hmm. whoever else is involved. So you forget after about you. it. You gotta. Right. Yeah. right. Because I mean, and you have a unique perspective because you know you're on both sides of the glass, literally. Mm -hmm. Um, is there anything that you can, any little nugget, like just to demystify? Because we, you hear that all the time mm -hmm. as talent. It's not you, it's them. And it's selection, I mean, not rejection. Right, right, yeah. right. Um, is, you know, really, truly, the only thing that you can do mm -hmm. is put the best you right. into that. Exactly. And then you literally, yeah. Yeah. you can't yeah. control anything there else, is, can that, you? That's, it's an illusion that you have control, that yeah. your voice is gonna make those guys think what they're supposed to think. Mm -hmm. It's an illusion, you know. Mm -hmm. All you can do is do the best job that you can at the level you are for wherever you are as you're climbing the ladder or you're coming down the ladder because you have to reinvent yourself or you have, you know, there's all yeah. those things. So I think it's important to realize that it's not, that's, don't worry about that stuff because that will take care of itself one way or the other, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and mm -hmm. so just keep, forging ahead. A friend of mine who was, he used to direct soap operas, um, he sang on Broadway, he was in Kismet, he was like, like this sort of older mentor friend of our family and he was just like, you're in line. If you step out of line, there's no chance. Right. Just stay in line. Oh, I love Keep I love doing that. the work. That's Keep doing idea. the work. Just stay in line. Yeah. And then, um, I don't know if you know Joan Darling, she was like, she directed like Mary Tyler Moore episodes, yeah. she did the one with the clown thing and mm -hmm. the, you know, um, she's amazing. She said, just go to play. I had a, I got cast in a, in a play, and it's like a two-hour play, and I'm on stage for those two hours, except for like five minutes for a change. Mm. And I, I, I call her frantically. I got cast. She goes, "Good." <laughs> and I said, "That's what yeah. you wanted." I know. That's the whole thing. <laughs> when you get what you want, you're like, "Holy moly!" What do I do now? I what do I do now, coach? I can't do it. What were they thinking? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So she's in a play in Burbank. She says, "I don't. I'm. I go on in about an hour and a half. Can you come by?" So. <laughs> stuff. I'm there. Uh, I go to her dressing room and she just looks at me. She goes, This is what you wanted, right? I said, Yeah. She says, Go to play. Mm. Just go to play. So yeah. I would drive to theater every day saying, Just go to play, just go to play. I had my, you know, my, my cue lines on a tape, a tape. Um, and they would, you know, and so I would just do my lines and, I'm, and I'd just be grateful and joyful that I had an opportunity to play. Right, and the same thing right. when, you're in your, when you're in your booth. <laughs> or in your booth, um, that you go to play. And that's how you get back to that childlike bliss right. and enjoyment and enthusiasm yeah. is you go to play. Just mm -hmm. sit, put the script up and go, I'm just here to play. Because until I send it, I can do whatever I want to do and True. have some fun. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So have some well, fun yeah, for your Yeah, if it's not you know, fun, yeah. if you've yeah. lost If you look fun, at it as a job, I mean, it yeah. is a job, but if you look at it as a drudge mm -hmm. or like, I got, I got, I got ten auditions. <sighs> oh my God! <laughs> it's like, oh, on, dude. You know, yes. it's like get on it, have yeah. fun with it, play. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got ten auditions. You should be like, right, you know? yeah. right. I have to say, yeah, man, that's um, really, that really, really. I have a couple of buddies that are, you know, top notch pros in the industry. Mm -hmm. They're like top level. I'm not even going to say their name, but. They do come here once in a while to my studio to, you know, mm -hmm. do a couple of auditions that they might have. Yeah. And I never say no to them because it's so cool and they book all the time. Wow. But there's never more than one take mm -hmm. and there's never, right. there's no editing. Wow. 
they look at the spot and they go, okay, got it, here we go. Bam. And they go for mm-hmm. it and they go like, okay, let's do the next one. I'm like, okay. We do the next <laughs> one. And I'm like, you don't want to edit. He goes, no, 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 no. He goes, that's, that's what I do. They don't overthink right. it. And right. I, I'm yeah. giving yeah. them the what I think, how I think it should go right. for what it is. And they're so confident mm-hmm. about what it is that they offer right. that there are no mistakes. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And when people hear it on the other end, yeah. they hear that. They hear that right. confidence. As you were talking about the authenticity. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. They may not know exactly what they want, but one thing they do know is they want somebody that feels like they yeah. know what they're doing right. or feels, you right. know, good mm-hmm. confidence. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I hear that. Yeah. Playing. And then, like, it's, that goes back to the Dawn thing. It's like, uh, you know, sometimes I would, like, give him a two second, you know, like another, let's, can we do another one? He goes, I already gave you what you wanted. <laughs> but it was always a loving, it's a very <coughs> father, son, uncle, yes. who was like, you yeah. know, he would get on the line, are you drunk again? Yeah, are you drunk Are you again? high? Are you this? Are you? He would just give me a, you know, he just kind of like, right. give me the business. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, but that's that thing. It's like, they, it's, they know what they gave you, but they also know that, that I'm the client. Exactly. Right. And if you want, you know, you know, I'm always the one like, give me a one take that, that like that, but give me some more so I have variety. Mm-hmm. I can make a promo quilt if I need to. Yeah. Um, if I thought, like, you know what, the tone, they changed the music. Right. You know, they yeah. changed the music, but and the second read he gave me, or the third read, had a different tone that, mel- that meshed with the music. Because mm-hmm. a voiceover person is part of that instrumentation. You know, it's the story, it's the sound effects, it's, you know, yeah. you're, you're part of an orchestra. Mm-hmm. You're the piece of the puzzle. Yeah. yeah. You have uh, a background in stage and acting, um, uh, TV, TV acting, and, film. and uh, soap opera. How did you How did you find your way into voiceover? Wow. <laughs> you said this is how low. Uh, you got back. basically like five minutes to tell the well, story. Quickly. We're getting in the time capsule. Come okay. on, everyone. We're getting in. There's plenty okay. of seats for everyone. <laughs> I was a child of my time. I watched TV all Saturday mornings. I watched cartoons. So who didn't want to know? You know. Of right. course. Okay, so you do that. Um, when I was in high school, I was very lucky. Um, I had a teacher who was a working actor, commercial actor, worked all the time. But when he needed, a, when he was working during the day, he would get a substitute, mm. and sometimes it'd be a voiceover actor, it might be a, a dancer, it might be uh, a filmmaker, and so we had real world people in our high school. Oh, that's yeah. awesome! So I, th- there was some. And along the way, you know, I, I, everyone knew who Yogi Bear was. Mm-hmm. So Dawes Butler was like, you know, back when it was drama log and not backstage. Oh, I right. remember drama right. Yeah, so I remember there'd be like little clippings and I would buy it, you know, I'd say, oh, there's a voiceover class. But, you know, I was like still in high school and I didn't know how to get the dough and how to get to Hollywood. And I was like, where's Hollywood from here? <laughs> 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 I mean, I, was, I grew up in LA, but it was still, right. you know, I don't have a car, right. you know. Um, you so, didn't have a car? I was, a, he was young. I was a young man. Oh, he didn't have his boy. license. Yeah. I was, he was a young boy. I was we practicing. went in the time capsule, Chuck. <laughs> That's it. We're, we're in the time capsule. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. We I, don't I have was, the hot tub. I went a little too further down the road. <laughs> Thank goodness. Thank God. <laughs> um, but there was those, I mean, as a 10 year old, practicing getting <laughs> shot. Shot in car. Oh. As like, you know, how would I, like on TV, oh, yeah. if I got shot here, I would fly this way and I'd land on my bed. You know, or this side, I'd land on my bed. No, so if I got hit in the stomach. So it was that sort of thing. But then when I heard the, the voices from the cartoons, you think, there's somebody doing that, mm-hmm. you know? And then when I, in high school, met, you know, this voiceover actor, I thought, wow. But then I kind of forgot about it, got into the stage world and that sort of thing. And then it kind of came back to me when I got involved in trailers. Mm-hmm. And I said to Don and John Leader, and I said, this has always been something, like it's a seed that was there, but it was never, I never found out how to really nurture it mm-hmm. at right. that time. And, and, and they said, here's what you do. <laughs> and they gave me the lowdown. And I just started going to classes and going to classes and going to classes. So is it, tell us, so what do you do, David? What do you say to those people out there right now? They're go like, to classes, go to classes, like, you know go what? to classes. <laughs> I've always wanted to explore right. this, mm-hmm. as you right. just said. Mm-hmm. What do I do? What's the first thing I need to do? Well, I'll tell you what. When I took a, a voiceover class, I did it with my best friend from high school. Beautiful singing voice, radio guy. Um, it was a six-week deal with, um, I think it was Cindy Akers. And, um, and I would tell, and he said, after he was done, after that six weeks, he said, and he's a really good, I thought he was a very good actor. And I, a very good, I mean, he used to like sing Led Zeppelin. He was like, he, was, he knew the stage. Yeah. And he had a great voice. But he just goes, not for me, man. Mm. You know, and he knew. But for other people, it pulls, it has to draw you. It has to like go, yep, yep. Yeah. you know? It has to pull, it's a calling. Mm-hmm. And I think once that 
you know that, then you start to find your way and you take classes and you study and you work with people and you call people and you listen to, you know, everyone does that whole thing where they mute the show and listen to the commercials right. and the right. trailers and, and all that. So it's that sort of thing. You just follow the thread that's pulling you. Yeah. Right. It's you know. like you could live your life, but your life feels better and more you yeah there's something more original there's yeah. more there's something more that feels just it resonates mm -hmm. yeah when you are able to do what you're doing yeah so and when you're a prime example. so hold on i'm not because oh, i wasn't oh, done with there's my, a part there's, there's a two-parter no no it was still a my first part follow up. oh um, that's a long so so okay no no so so you so you you wanted right. to do voiceover mm -hmm. and then you started taking some classes and right. stuff like that right. and so what happened then like how like what was your first like thing that you got and did you get an agent before you got a job, or how did that it go? Was, um, wow, it's that's a tough one because it's it kind of, it's like what came first sort of thing, yeah. you know. So it's like I was studying a little bit and I did a demo, and then were you uh, ready to do a demo? I think I was. I thought I was, <laughs> but, <laughs> I but, I I didn't, was. but I didn't. But the the coach at the time yeah. said, "I think you're ready to do this," oh, yeah. and I went, "I am. Okay, I am. I think I will." Yeah. <laughs> And I, I wasn't at a certain level, yeah. but I'm glad I did mm -hmm. um, because it it set sort of a baseline. Yeah. And when I hear, hear of course, we all go when we hear those back. It's, but that's hopefully that's what we do. We we grow on a trajectory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, when we learn, when we master something, mastery, we we have a high learning curve. We drop back. We go up. We plateau. We go yeah. up. We drop. But we're always going up. Yeah. Right. So that was just part of the learning process. And that's all this really is, is a process, like yeah. our lives. Is, but the voiceover world is that it's a process. So mm -hmm. I made a demo. And then uh, because I worked in a trailer house, um, I was able to do some scratches here and there. And then a friend of mine at another place said, hey, do you want, do you want to audition for something? And I said, sure. So I did. And it was a trailer. I thought, cool. You know, um, and... I never saw. Was that the first thing you ever? The first thing I did was, I think it was a trailer or it might have been a promo. I can't remember. Is it the okay, promo or a trailer? But it still, it wasn't a traditional right. commercial. It wasn't a traditional commercial. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I'm in a theater in, like in West LA or something and it comes on. Mm -hmm. I'm like, because I never, got a, I never oh. got a copy of it at the time. Yeah. Oh. You know, uh, I didn't have a DAT player. <laughs> didn't have a DAT player. They didn't have DAT players for the car. That's what they sent me. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I can't play You're this. like, what is it? Great. May as well send me a VCR I now. Made it. Yeah, I made Look. So I'm sitting yeah. in the theater, and I'm like, I was like, my jaw drops, and you know, mm -hmm. and I'm like with some friends, and I'm like, dude, that's you. I'm like, I know. And cool. then somewhere along the way, it got attached to the front of the Big Lebowski, you know. So yeah. that was kind of cool. So when I, yeah. and I didn't know that either until I put the Big Lebowski, and I was yeah. like on VCR. <laughs> so yeah. Like, oh my god. So it was kind of a cool thing. So yeah. that was kind of that, and then. Um, Someone I was working doing some promos and one of the creative directors said we need a young Young sounding voice and I can do a high-energy kind of you know, just relax. No no promo-esque read yeah. and I, you know, and so they used to use me now and then um, on doing a lot of ADR mm -hmm. or Doing a couple promos here or there um, But it's it's just that sort of thing and so you know yeah. yeah, I just follow that dream. Well, that concludes part one with David Alden. Okay. And if you thought that was good, just wait for part two next week. It's going to yes. be awesome. Yes. Also, leave us your comments and thoughts below. Absolutely. And don't forget, you can coach with David Alden on opencoaches.com. It's free to sign up. You need to do it. He's amazing. And oh, all amazing. the other coaches on there are, too. Absolutely. You guys, we love you. Thanks for watching. And keep up with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Guess what, Chuck? You, you always, always have time, time for a little, little buzz. buzz. Neo Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demos That Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit DemosThatRock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little